Before the video starts I would recommend the Holy Bible to read at the end of video please check out the link in the description. This day, the Father instructs us to look at ourselves through my eyes. Consider yourself to be the redeemed. Imagine that you are the one who has been forgiven. You should think of yourself as the son or daughter of my right hand who is entitled to certain things. You will in no way be denied access to my throne of grace, nor will you be turned away from it. I created man in my image in the garden, and I confirmed that image on the cross once it had been created. While I was crying out, it is finished, I was laying the groundwork for an entirely new creation, a completely new species that would exist on this planet. In the moment that you are reborn, the DNA of that new creation starts to replicate itself throughout your entire existence. This process will continue until you are perfected in my image. Thus, start this day with a clean slate and a clean slate, and perceive yourself as I perceive you. When you gaze into the part of your heart that you have surrendered to me, you will realize that I am staring back at you. The Father says, Do not be afraid. From the deepest portion of your being to the most remote side of your being, I am irresistibly expanding myself to encompass everything that you are. Those that adore you are you. What I have done is make you the focus of my attention. When you give your eyes the command to see as I see and to act as I act, the power of sin, shame, and failure will be subdued by that image. Presently, the Father is saying, Make a mark on the man who is perfect, the end of that man shall be peace. Have I not designated you as a recipient of my mercy and singled you out as a special individual? In the same way that I remembered Noah and the people who survived the flood, I have marked you and remembered you on this day. There have been instances when you have pondered what the final result will be. Is it true that you are still present here? Take no concern for the future. Take the energies that you would have spent on the issues of tomorrow and spend them on me. Whenever you come to me, I will shield and safeguard you from the evils that will occur in the future. When I thought about Noah, I sent a gust of wind in his direction. My wind is blowing over you right now at this precise time, despite the fact that it is doing so. The breeze that I am blowing over your life will allow the waters of hardship to subside, and you will emerge from the water on dry ground. You are going to emerge from the current attack of hell unscathed and unaffected beyond any measure. When it comes to matters concerning you, this will always be the one and only response that my hand provides. The wind of my grace, the wind of my mercy, and the wind of my wind are approaching. I will deliver you unharmed on the side of triumph by blowing the wind of my might, which will turn back the scourge of the enemy that is bringing you down. According to what the Father has said today, confusion and resistance are both components of battle. Do not make the assumption that you are not pursuing the path that I have outlined for you simply because you are experiencing conflict. I have not left you in the dark about the schemes that Satan employs. Make up your decision that you will not allow yourself to be fooled by the smoke and mirrors that the devil uses to make himself appear to be more than he actually is. The term adversary is used to refer to your adversary in the written scriptures. The fact that he is deceptive and cunning does not change the fact that you may recognize him in any aspect of life where challenges are present. As long as you keep track of the things that work against you, you will always be able to uncover this devilish plan, regardless of how efficiently it is concealed. It is your responsibility to put up a fight, and it is my responsibility to drive him away, says the Father. If you put up a fight against the adversary, he will go away because that is his nature, and I have not given him any other option. I have created light, and I have created darkness, and yes, I have created waste in order to destroy it, Nonetheless, no weapon that is formed against you will be successful. This means that I must confront every obstacle with my thoughts, my mind, and my character. What exactly are you planning to do? If I were in your place, I would act in the same manner that you are going to act. 
Rise up into your entitlement today and recognize it as the inheritance that I have bestowed upon you in accordance with my will. I have not destined you to endure anything that I paid the price for on Calvary, and you are not a victim. I have not destined you to suffer anything. According to what the Father has revealed to us today, I do not accept the blood of goats and bulls, but the sacrifices of praise that you offer will be a flavor to me that smells sweet. While there are many who laugh and make fun of the oblations that you make with your lips, you should be aware of the fact that your worship alters the outcome, even the immediate consequence of the situation that you are currently facing. The act of elevating my name above the difficulty that you are experiencing causes my heart to respond with praise. When it comes to the request for my blessing and provision on your behalf today, my hand is quick to scribe it. Now is the time for the angels to rush to your defense in order to support and advocate for your cause that if you call upon me in the midst of your difficulties, will I not respond to you? Call upon me even when you believe that you are not deserving of my mercy, shall I not shower my mercy upon you in a greater quantity? I will eliminate the efforts of the enemy to contain and pollute you if you offer thanksgiving and pay your hard vows to me. I will do this. I am bringing you to the replenishing of my fountains of love, forgiveness, and joy, says your Papa God, and I am doing so today, this hour, and this season, in today's message, the Father encourages us to not let the urgent take precedence over the important in our lives. On this day, make it your goal to direct your efforts toward your potential rather than toward the challenge you are facing. It is impossible to escape the presence of problems, such as the impoverished, Nonetheless, your potential has a finite lifespan that must not be disregarded. One of the doors of opportunity is standing in front of you. I don't want you to just knock, I want you to rip this door off its hinges and enter with audacious faith, believing that you are who I say you are regardless of the circumstances. I want you to do this. See with your own eyes today the person that I have fashioned you to be. Take a moment to visualize yourself in the enormous splendor of my potential, which is already present inside you. Regardless matter the circumstances, your potential is unaffected. Furthermore, as you concentrate on the throne, your potential will lead you out of deprivation, constraint, and lack. This is because your potential is superior to your circumstances. I made you for the sake of bringing about growth, childbirth, acceleration, and fruitfulness. Within my kingdom, this city serves as your home base. The Father encourages you to rejoice in that provision and to witness it materialize as your experience on this day. The Father has spoken to us today, saying, I am blowing the chauffeur with the blast of my nostrils into your spirit today. To breathe life and vitality into everything that is contained inside you. I am sending my wind. The Father replies, Tell your ears to hear my sound that I am speaking. You are being summoned to the feast that will celebrate my blessings and my wealth through the sound of this sound. In the fight against deprivation, rejection, and failure, this sound is a sound of battle. According to the Father, your future will not consist of having an abortion. As my sound reverberates through every fiber of your body, I request that you pay attention to my voice and submit to my sound. Strength, blessing, and favor are all present in my music, which is alive and lively. To hear my voice, you must first open your ears, and then you must reject the words of the adversary that speak of defeat, failure, and discouragement. The Father makes it clear that the prognosis is not gloomy. Give your eyes the command to see. For I have given you the city, and the citadels of darkness that surround you are tumbling to the ground in ruins. There will be no more failure, no more sadness, and no more sighing for my sound, says the Father, because I am announcing the clarion annunciation of blessing, favor, and kingdom portion in your life today. According to what the Father has revealed to us today, if you are willing to allow it, revelation in your spirit will rise above information in your head. Instead of allowing yourself to be shaped by the natural mind, you should allow yourself to be altered by the mind of my spirit, which is already present inside you. 
Information is contained within your mind, which is also constrained by insufficiency and imperfection. It is my mind that is contained inside you that is transformational, unlimited, and unbounded. There is a proverb that you are familiar with that says, take the limits off of God. As you allow your mind to be washed and cleansed of everything that emanates from fear, unbelief, and bad expectations, I say to you today that I am not limited in any way, and you will also not be confined or constrained. I say this because I am not limited in any way. Your mind is shaped by your history, the experiences you've had, and the societal conditioning you've received. Every day, you are confronted with a subset of limitations, restrictions, and feelings of inadequacy. This is the information that is derived by the logical mind working in conjunction with the five senses. For today, I extend an invitation to you to put aside any assessments that are based on common sense and to fly with me to heights where the impossible is not only conceivable but also unavoidable. In the natural state, I create, design, and release destiny, provision, healing, and deliverance by my hand. This is the state that man refers to as impossibility and fantasy. This is the place where all prayers that are answered are answered, and there are packages of the miraculous that are being issued right now with your address included on the delivery details. I am ruling myself into your circumstances, and as you trust, obey, and yield to me, the answers you seek will be made manifest. Therefore, rejoice, says the Father, and expect, for I am ruling myself into your circumstances. In this day and age, the Father instructs us to not let the adversary dampen our enthusiasm. Pessimism and unbelief are both forms of pseudo-sophistication, nonetheless, they only result in the production of garbage and ashes. The things that other people say are silly, but you should go ahead and believe them nonetheless, for I utilize the foolish things of the world to confuse the wise. I discharge the full weight of my grandeur by utilizing the simple things that other people look down on and consider to be beneath them. You have nothing to prove, and you have nothing for which you should apologize. You should never pay attention to those who criticize you, and you should never respond to those who demand that you explain yourself, even if you are aware that you have acted in accordance with my voice. According to the Father, the spirit of the mocker is being driven out of your land. It is through strength, healing, and deliverance that the spirit of grace and mercy manifests itself. I am bringing a completely new spiritual ecosystem over you today because you requested for new light, and I am bringing it today. It is the light of forgiving and releasing that is breaking the shackles that have been placed on your feet, and the darkness is being dissipated. According to the Father, you will be able to walk into the new day. For today, we will be focusing on commissioning, engagement, and outcome. Within you, I am putting my character under the command of my character. I am bringing about a kingdom outcome that will transform even this day how you appear, think, and act. I am doing this by combining the force of my dunamis with your weakness and need. I declare that you are loved, you will not only believe this, but you will also know that this is the default experience you have in connection with me. In this day and age, the Father instructs us to be interruptible, for there will soon be interruptions of glory. Someone will be standing there and asking, I was driving by, and something compelled me to stop and knock on your door, can you help me? There will be a knock at the door, and someone will be standing there. You are going to be at the grocery store, and the cashier will reach for your products, glance at your face, and begin crying. Are you prepared for that? There is nothing regular about what I am doing in you and through you, and as a result, you will be unable to go about your business as usual, they will impede traffic around your house for the people flocking around, and you didn't even plan to do anything other than go about your day, for I am here, and I am changing and changing and changing those things that have crowded out my presence in the earth. When I come to redeem the purchased possession and claim what I paid for on the cross, the Father says, then neighborhoods, cities, and nations will be disrupted. 
I will come to redeem what I have purchased. My people will no longer be dominated by unbelief or the theology of failure because I am now demonstrating to them what a God who is living, loving, and present is willing and able to accomplish. Where do you stand? Call out, call out, call out. The Father has spoken to us today, saying, I am redefining your life with a new perspective right now. From from point forward, your history will no longer serve as a reliable point of reference for determining who you are or where you are heading in my kingdom. The Father has spoken to us today, saying, I release to you the template of destiny that I crafted before the foundation of the world. There is not a single pre-existing circumstance or contradiction that has the potential to or will usurp that pattern. Declare to your eyes, be opened, and to your ears, be opened, for in my kingdom, you will no longer be unable to see or hear what is going on around you any longer. It is not important to pay attention to what other people say or what the adversary says. As a result of the fact that you are not unaware of Satan's schemes, you do not have to pay attention to his threats, my plan and my purposes are draped over you like a self-fulfilling mantle of favor, blessing, and power. My hand is not unreachable, and my heart is disposed to bring now the change and the upgrade that you have cried out to me for. Focus your attention on me, says the Father, and disregard the winds of adversity and the conditions that are detrimental in the natural world. A statement spoken by the Father today is that my goodness comes before my grandeur. You have pleaded with me to grant you greater glory, and I assure you that it is within your reach, says the Father. Your access to my radiance is granted to you on the basis of the blood that was shed on the cross, and not on the basis of any other criteria. When it comes to my throne, there is no particular level of performance-based strategy. The only thing that can grant you access to the glory that you have requested from me is blood that has been shed. According to the Father, my glory is not something that is visible to the outside world, rather, it is something that is genuine on the inside. I reside in the midst of the cherubim, in the inner chambers of your own heart and on the inside of your own life. Moses cried out to be able to behold my glory, but before he could do so, it was essential for my goodness to be brought before him. I will, from this time forward, cause my kindness to pass before you and lodge in your life, and I will bring it to actuality and complete manifestation. Therefore, get ready, get ready, get ready, says the Father. It is my goodness that serves as the introduction to the grandeur that you have been seeking, and I am willing to respond to your cries without additional delay. The Father encourages us to rejoice. It is the day that all will change, therefore rejoice and be glad since this is the day. In this day and age, the Father tells us not to be concerned about the possibility that we will miss out on what I am accomplishing on earth. As soon as the change occurs and the release of my spirit is made available, I will make sure that you are in the line of sight of my glory. You see, the Father explains, when I breathe upon the planet, you are the breezeway through which I exhale. You are the one who creates the atmosphere. It is via the inhalation of your prayers and the exhalation of your pronouncements that the world is transformed. You should not be concerned about the circumstances and conditions in your life that are in conflict with my promise, since those things are subject to change, and I am the God who is able to make it happen.